Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another wonderful, fun-filled episode of Watch Me Wrench with your host, Mr. Wrench. I know I was calling myself Mr. Watch Me Wrench in the past, but that sounds stupid, and I don't really want to disclose my name, so let's just call me Wrench. So, today we are working on my 2009 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited with a 5.7 Hemi. The reason why I'm working on the car today is because about a month ago the car threw an error code. The check engine light came on, so I hooked up my scanner. Uh, it's a real basic one here. It's an Autel Autolink AL319. And the scanner told me that it was an error code um, P0302 which means cylinder number two was having a misfire. So, what could cause that? A uh, few things could cause that. It could be your spark plugs could be fouled, or it could be the coil pack is bad. You could also have a vacuum leak or a manifold leak. There are several other reasons, so I did my best to try to diagnose it. I did not find any vacuum leaks, no manifold leaks. I took out the spark plugs and they looked fine. I had changed the spark plugs maybe three years ago on this vehicle and the spark plugs looked fine so I assumed it was the coil pack so I bought a new coil pack and I replaced it. That's very simple. It's just held on with two uh, 10 millimeter bolts right there and there you just unplug this one wire, squeeze it and lift up, pull it out, and that's pretty much it. So I drove the car for like a month, put several hundred miles on it, no issues, ran fine, the check engine light went off. Now what I did, I, you know, I went the uh, old fashioned way and I kind of went ghetto, so after I replaced the coil pack, I just undid the battery cables and let the car sit for like 30 minutes and then I put the cable back on to clear the code but that doesn't really erase the code from the car's computer so a month later after I was driving the car with no issues the light came back on I hooked the scanner back up it gave me the same error code now did that error code pop up again because I failed to erase it or is there still another issue with my luck, there's probably still another issue because I don't get lucky with these things. So today I'm going to change all the spark plugs, even though they're fine. And I'm trying to do this uh, the cheapest way possible. You know, so my, I first assumed after a visual inspection, you know, the spark plugs look fine. So I assumed the coil pack here was bad. I changed that. That was about $45. So now I'm going to change the spark plugs, and here are the spark plugs. That's the part number, and unfortunately this car has 16 spark plugs, two spark plugs per cylinder. So these are actually NGKs. They're not made by Mopar. I guess they're made by NGK and packaged in a Mopar box. So now these, you have to gap them I've seen them ranging from 40 thousandths to 43 thousandths. I'm going to do mine at 40 thousandths. So, first thing you're going to do is gap all 16 spark plugs to whatever you prefer, 40 to 43 thousandths. I believe this year, Hemi, this is a 2009, I believe it calls for uh, 40 thousandths. Okay, so basically you're only going to need a spark plug socket, this is a 5.8 spark plug socket. Spark plug sockets have like, uh, they have some rubber in there so that you don't crack the uh, porcelain portion of the spark plug. Okay, so basically the first thing you're going to do, you want to change the spark plugs, is you're going to remove the wire running to the coil pack. So you're just going to squeeze this here, it's got a tab, just squeeze it and lift it up. That's it. And then you have two 10 millimeter bolts. 
So grab yourself a 10 millimeter socket and a wrench, a ratchet, and undo these two. All right, let me get that off and I'll be back. Okay, so I got the two 10 millimeter bolts undone. And now I am just going to lift up on this, on the coil pack. Just make sure these are off. Okay. There you go. Okay. There's your coil pack. This is the new one, you can tell. It's cleaner than the others. Okay, let's set that aside. And now you got your two spark plugs down in there. You can see them. Okay, and for that, you're just going to take an extension and your spark plug socket, a 5 8 spark plug socket. Get it down there. Okay, it's engaged. And then take your ratchet and undo it counterclockwise. Okay, let me get those spark plugs out and I'll be back. Okay, welcome back. So I have these two spark plugs out for uh, cylinder number two. As you can see, they're fine. There's no oil, there's no gas. You don't have a buildup of carbon. What you do see is rather normal. Um, these are E3 spark plugs. I had changed these a few years. I had changed the stock spark plugs, the factor, the ones that the car came with from the factory, to these E3 spark plugs. I was hoping to get a little more uh, better uh, fuel economy, and they did actually help a little bit. I saw like uh, one mile more per gallon because this vehicle is the absolute worst vehicle when it comes to fuel mileage. I mean, I don't care about fuel mileage because, you know, all my cars have big V8s. But this one's absolutely horrific. This one only gets uh, around the city 9 to 11 miles per gallon and on the highway 11 to like 13 and a half tops. And that's with the E3 spark plugs. So... It'll probably go down a little bit when I install these uh, traditional standard NGK spark plugs in there. Um, I will put a little bit of uh, anti-seize on the threads here because you have two different metals. I don't know what this metal is, but the heads are aluminum. And whenever you have two uh, dissimilar metals meeting, um, there is always a possibility that they could uh, fuse together. So I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize, and then I will install these and torque them. The torque specs call from 12 to 14 pound-feet of uh, torque. So between 12 and 14, I'll go to 14. Um, and I'll put a little bit of anti-seize, and I'll use a torque wrench for that. So you only need really three tools for this job. 10 millimeter socket to remove the coil packs a 5 8 spark plug socket to remove the spark plugs and then you need a torque wrench to torque the spark plugs down to uh, 12 to 14 pound feet of torque alright so I'm not gonna film every one cylinder because it's just the same thing uh, what I will film is you know firing the car back up and uh, before you start this job disconnect the battery whenever you're unplugging electrical uh, wires, it's always a good idea to disconnect the battery, just as an added safety measure. All right, uh, let me get to it and I'll be back. Okay, so before you install the spark plugs and torque them down, you're going to gap them. I use this simple little tool right here, spark plug gapper. Um, again, these get gapped to, uh, I've seen them 40 to 43 thousandths. I'm going to gap mine to 40 thousandths. I'm sorry, I believe that actually, I believe that this 2009 5.7 Hemi calls for 40 thousandths. So I'm going to gap mine to 40 thousandths. And I'm just going to use this tool here. And then I will put some anti-seize on the threads here. And then I will torque them down to 14 foot-pounds. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so I've got this one spark plug uh, gapped to 40 thousandths. I got anti-seize on there, 
I'm using a short extension and then a medium extension for this particular spark plug. <clears throat> so just here's how I do it. Insert the spark plug into the spark plug socket. Um, spark plug socket will hold the spark plug in place. It won't allow it to fall. And then just guide it down into the hole. And then thread it. Always, I always thread them all the way down by hand. Never just drop it down and then grab your ratchet and start cranking on it in case you're gonna, in case it's not straight and then you're gonna wind up cross threading and damaging the threads. And you don't want to do that. So I can feel it's engaged and it's threading properly, no resistance, and it's just about all the way down. So now I'll grab my torque wrench and I'll torque it down to 14 pound-feet of torque. And another tip, you always want to try to keep your extension straight all the time when you're tightening or torquing down a spark plug. If I hold the extension off to the side, you're going to be putting a lot of a, a lot of a side load onto the porcelain portion of the spark plug and could crack it. So just always hold it as centered as possible. That's just a tip. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so I just want to show you on uh, I'm on the passenger side on the uh, third cylinder and the third coil pack. It has this bracket on there. So all you have to do is just basically lift up on this one tab right here. Pick it up like this and it'll come right off. It just basically straddles this wire harness right there. Wire harness just sits right there. So rather than the wire harness resting right there, it'll rest comfortably in this bracket. So on the uh, passenger side, on the third coil pack, just keep your eye out for this bracket. It's so simple. It takes one second. Just lift up on the tab and pull it off. All right, let me get back to it. I'll be back. All right, I got the bracket back in place. As you can see, it just hooks on to the coil pack. Just took like a couple seconds to get on there. Again, it just supports this wire harness. All right. So I'll be back. Okay, welcome back. For those of you who don't know how to gap the spark plugs, I'm going to try to show you on one here. Um, just give me a second. Let me try to support my cell phone. I don't have a stand. Hold. Okay, so basically you're going to take this tool and you're going to insert it. Well, first let's check the gap slide the thin end okay so you're going to slide just to check the gap and that's about 35 thousandths we need it to 40 thousandths so what you're going to do is take this open part slide it over there and you see that and you're just going to like nudge up gently And let's see how that came out. Perfect, right there, 40 thousandths. All right, so that's basically how you do it. All right, I'll be back. Let me show you all a trick that I do. Can you see the black um, extension that's down in the spark plug hole? Okay, so that extension is attached to another small extension. And then it's attached to the spark plug socket and the spark plugs are pretty deep down in this motor and after you torque them when you try to pull the extension and the spark plug socket out guess what happens the spark plug socket stays stuck on the spark plug and you can't get it out so here's what I do see that that's a little piece of black electrical tape now watch See, the black socket came out, the black extension came undone from the other extension. But with the electrical tape, see that? Everything came out. So 
So basically all I do, first run a piece of electrical tape up and into the socket. Leave yourself a, like a long tail. Then for additional support, wrap a little black tape around the first one. And then you kind of have something to pull the socket out because otherwise you'll never get the socket out because they're so deep down in there and my spark plug socket just stays stuck onto those spark plugs and without it what happens is you try to pull up and the spark plug socket stays there but that's one little trick all right guys so don't forget that use a little uh black electrical tape help you lift it out all right i'll be back all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back so we've got it all buttoned back up everything went according to plan it's not the hardest spark plug job but it certainly is not the easiest you're gonna have to be constantly using different length um, extensions on the uh, spark plug socket like over here you don't really have much room so you gotta get creative so break out every different length extension you have but other than that everything went according to plan let me uh, fire up the car Give me one. alright so there you have it ladies and gentlemen she runs, she runs good no issues I'll leave the engine cover off for about a month just in case the uh, error code comes back we'll see what happens again the error code I got was P0302 cylinder number two over here on the passenger side was supposedly misfiring so so far I changed the coil pack and the spark plugs let's see if that resolves the problem I looked for vacuum leaks I checked all the vacuum lines everything looks fine no manifold, uh, not leaking any fuel from the intake manifold. I don't see any cracks or anything anywhere. So hopefully this resolves it. If the code comes back, I will make another video. Thank you very much for watching. If you could click the like and subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.